Uh, Steve, come on up. Carrie, come on over. Okay, good afternoon. I'm Corey Johnson, Speaker of the New York City Council, and I'm joined uh, at the podium with uh, Steve Matteo, the Minority Leader of the Council and the Chair of our Standards and Ethics Committee, and Kerry Cohen, who is our independent prosecutor who handled this case. You're going to hear from both of them. We're here today uh, regarding a serious and disturbing matter on the stated agenda. The Council will be voting on a resolution by the Committee on Standards and Ethics related to disciplinary action against Council Member Andy King. I want to thank the Committee for this comprehensive and even-handed uh, report uh, and the independent prosecutor for a thorough investigation. The resolution calls to suspend the council member for 30 days, imposes a $15,000 fine, and establishes an independent monitor to oversee his office. These grave actions are unprecedented by the council. In the history of our modern legislative body, no member has ever faced such a long a suspension or high penalty by council vote. No council member has ever had a monitor in their district office. Despite Councilmember King's claims to the contrary, I have no doubt about the integrity of this process. The Standards and Ethics Committee spent months on this case in meetings, hearings, and eventually deliberations. They weighed the precedents, they did their jobs admirably, and I, we owe them a debt of gratitude. Before I invite uh, Chair Matteo to speak on this resolution, I'd like to applaud the courage of the witnesses in this case who faced retaliation to their livelihoods, yet came forward to speak to the committee anyway. I'd also like to applaud the council staffer who was the complainant in the 2017 case. She wrote a thoughtful account in the Daily News today of all that she has been through, and I want to thank her for telling her story. I thank all of them for their brave actions, and I deplore what Councilmember King has put them through. The council takes accountability and disciplinary charges very seriously. So on today's stated agenda, the council will be voting, voting on the following legislation. Preconsidered resolution 1138 by the Committee on Standards and Ethics would adopt the resolution of the recommended sanctions brought against Councilmember Andy King. The, char the recommended sanctions are as follows. One, Councilmember King shall be suspended without pay for a period of 30 days to commence immediately upon passage and adoption of this resolution. Two, Councilmember King shall be removed from all committee assignments, including any committee chairs effective immediately. Councilmember King shall not chair any committee for the duration of his term and may reapply for membership on, this on a committee one year after adoption of this resolution. Three, for the remainder of Councilmember King's term in office, Councilmember King's offices shall be subject to a monitor designated by the chair of the committee with approval of the council's office of general counsel in order to ensure that staff in Councilmember King's office are appropriately managed in accordance. Four, the monitor shall be permitted to engage in the following conduct. A, they'll be able to review and approve all hiring, firing, and other employment status decisions for members of Councilmember King's staff. B, they will have full access to Councilmember King and King staff council email accounts. C, they can attend Councilmember King's staff meetings, none of which shall be held at Councilmember King's residence, and they'll require pre approval of any off site staff meetings. And D, they'll hold regular meetings with Councilmember King's staff outside the presence of Councilmember King. The fifth uh, recommended sanction, Councilmember King shall not allow staff to use their personal vehicles for council purposes without adequate reimbursement for the same. This restriction on the use of personal vehicles includes driving Councilmember King to and from events and or appearances. Six, Councilmember King shall ensure that, someone keeps hitting the light over there. Uh, Six, Councilmember King shall ensure that Neva Schillingford King is prohibited, prohibited from giving directions to King staff, attending staff meetings, and using council resources for any personal or non-council related business. Seven, any current King staff member who Councilmember King has retaliated against may return to work at Councilmember King's offices and have their position and or responsibilities restored. Eight, 
Councilmember King shall complete appropriate training to be determined by the Office of General Counsel, and, Council, and it will be at Councilmember King's expense and must be done by no later than March 1, 2020. Nine, Councilmember King shall pay a fine of $15,000 and failure by Councilmember King to pay accordingly such payment, uh, to pay accordingly to the payment schedule may result in disciplinary proceedings being reopened. And 10, failure by Councilmember King to adequately comply with any provision of this resolution, including full cooperation with the work and directives of the monitor may result in reopening of this, this, this disciplinary proceeding. Uh, next, we're going to hear from the independent prosecutor, uh, Carrie Cohen. I want her to come forward and speak on this matter. And then we're going to hear from the minority leader and chair of the committee, who has done a great job handling this. But first, I want to introduce Carrie Cohen. She's a partner at uh, Morrison and Forrester, and she was our special prosecutor, independent prosecutor, uh, during this case. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First, I want to commend the speaker and the council and the Office of the General Counsel for taking the allegations against Council Member King so seriously and entrusting myself, my colleague Amanda Geyer, who's here, and my firm with the responsibility to conduct a full and impartial review of the facts and then present the evidence to the Committee on Standards and Ethics. I also want to commend the Chair and the Council Members of the Committee on Standards and Ethics for the attention they gave to this matter, the seriousness with which they took their duties, and the thoroughness of their consideration of the evidence. It is unfortunate that rather than participate in the investigation and disciplinary proceeding, Councilmember King chose instead to frustrate the investigation and the process at every turn, including retaliating against potential and actual witnesses and now making baseless allegations of violations of his due process rights. The committee and I were keenly committed to ensuring that Council Member King was afforded every due process right, and I am confident that the Council and the Court that will now review the proceeding will conclude that there was no violation of any of Council Member King's due process rights and find his arguments to the contrary, to be wholly without merit. I'll now turn it over to Chair Matteo. Thank you. Um, I'd like to quickly comment on the report of the committee and the resolution we sent to the council for a vote at today's sta stated meeting. Anyone who's read the report knows just how serious these charges are and how wide-ranging and troubling the misconduct was. In the course of investigating this matter, the committee received substantial amounts of credible evidence establishing extensive conflicts of interest rampant disorderly conduct, and an egregious violation of the Council's EEO policy in the office of Councilmember King. Beyond and in addition to all this credible and damning evidence of misconduct, the committee's investigation was not only consistently obstructed by Councilmember King, he took measures to retaliate against staffers who cooperated with the committee. From our initial opening of the matter in March of this year through the disciplinary hearing in September, Councilmember King regularly acted to intimidate staffers who might be contacted by committee investigators and even took measures to fire staffers who had cooperated or might cooperate with us. Taken together, this pattern and practice of conduct is simply and completely unacceptable. Not only did Councilmember King regularly misuse his office for personal benefit, place his staff in an unsafe working environment, and violate the Council's EEO policy, he actively and aggressively attempted to thwart our investigation into his wrongdoing. I'd like to also qu quickly address the council members' claims of a lack of due process during this disciplinary proceeding. Our report lays out all this in great detail, but I must reiterate that Council Member King, from the very beginning, was afforded extensive due process rights. He was given three weeks after the issuance of charges to prepare for the hearing, and he was given the opportunity at the hearing to present evidence and cross-examine the special counsel's witnesses. He could also present his own witnesses. He did none of this. In fact, from the outset, the only actions Councilmember King took were efforts to intimidate and retaliate against staffers that cooperated with us or continually attempted to delay the process. Councilmember King was afforded every opportunity from before this matter was offic even officially opened by the committee until the moment before we voted to send it to the full body to engage with us, talk to us, and present his side of the story. 
Based on all this egregious behavior, and after taking dozens of hours of witness interviews, receiving hundreds of pages of document discovery, and holding a two-day trial, the committee is recommending the sanctions laid out in the resolution up for a vote today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, thank you, Kerry. We're joined by Majority Leader Lloyd Cumbo. I'm happy to take on-topic questions. This, just on this, we're going to have another stated meeting in 48 hours where I can take as many off-topic questions as you want. But today, we're just focused on this matter. So we're going to start with on-topic questions. And we'll start with Katie Honan. Well, um, we're confident in the, re in the resolution that we put forth. Um, for this matter and, and for this committee, these are, these are the resolution and the recommendations that we're putting, putting forth at the full body today, and that's what we will be voting on. Do you think the criticism that it's not enough is fair? No, I think that after hours and hours of deliberations, um, being a part of this for eight months, I think these recommendations sanctions are very strong. And uh, it's something that we don't take very lightly. And we've came to this conclusion. Uh, this is unprecedented what we've put forth, and we stand by it. Uh, Dave? Steve, why not just, you talked about the campus counselor that should resign. Why not go through the criminal process that, that would have forced them to be a gotten a conviction? The Illinois court doesn't, or does that not hold water? I'm happy to have the, the special prosecutor discuss that. I'm not an attorney or prosecutor. Go ahead. Sure. Um, the, Facts that were substantiated are set forth fully in the report. I am not sure whether they give rise to potential criminal prosecutors. I will leave that, you know, for another day. But you can read the facts as fully set forth by the committee that were substantiated. And I'm not sure there's anything in that that um, leads to a criminal prosecution. I stand by the committee. You know, the committee, as the chair said, spent months and months and months and months and months uh, looking at the evidence, they eventually went through uh, a jury trial made up of the five members of the committee. This is an unprecedented level of sanction against a council member. No council member in the I think, history of, of the modern body has ever uh, seen a level of sanction like this. Um, I said what my personal feeling was uh, earlier or last week, which is that he should resign. Uh, but ultimately, you know, the committee put forward these very, very strong sanctions. And as the special prosecutor just said, uh, we may, uh, you know, have to refer some of the things in here to other uh, agencies, and they'll have to make a further determination on all of this. Uh, let, let me go to Gloria, then I'll go back to you, Andrew. Um, for, first of all, I think everything was under consideration. Um, and as you go through this process, you, you want to take all the information, you want to consider everything. So the committee certainly consider, considered everything. Our concern um, is certainly setting a precedent on the facts of the case that were presented to us. Um, we understand, and we certainly do not take lightly, that Councilmember King was, was duly elected and is a representative of his district, and we certainly don't take that lightly. We don't think that the facts of the case that were presented to us rise to the level of expulsion. Um, and certainly, we have a duty uh, to not, we don't believe to set a precedent that any facts that are similar that goes forth this committee, whether we're all still on it or in the future, um, is an automatic expulsion. But there's some references to we're, we're, I'll, we're, we're gonna, we'll, I'll call on everyone. Don't worry. We're going to go to Andy. Wouldn't the average New Yorker in their job, if they were found culpable of retaliation, harassment, conflict of interest, these serious charges, wouldn't they lose their jobs? Wouldn't this council member lose his job? I mean, one of the things that we have in a democracy is that voters get to decide who their elected officials are. We may not agree with that decision all the time. Uh, but that is what the voters get to decide. And Councilmember King has been elected on three separate occasions by the voters of his district. You know, I have fully and completely condemned his actions. Uh, I, you know, we uh, hired an independent prosecutor with a sterling resume who has 
prosecuted uh, some of the highest elected officials in the state of New York. Uh, and so you saw the level of seriousness with which, with, with which we took this case. But ultimately, after the five members, and as the chair said, after the five members deliberated for hours and hours and hours in conjunction with the independent prosecutor, this is what people thought was the appropriate penalty because of what you just heard from the chair. There was a precedential consideration that was involved here. And during this entire time, we did everything we could to protect the people who were being retaliated against. Yes. Yeah, there is a, a reference in the report about some misappropriation of funds. So it does appear that while you're treating this as an internal regulatory matter, there's some potential that there was crossing the line of criminality. It, it couldn't, uh, Councilman uh, Chang say that, that this shows that you didn't break the law because you're certainly a lawyer qualified to make that determination. And has there been referral to other appropriate agencies that might take a deeper look at it? So I'm not going to comment on whether or not there have been referrals to other agencies. Um, the conduct is as fully set forth in the report that was substantiated, and I will leave it for other agencies, perhaps, or uh, other prosecutors to review it and determine whether they think it violated any criminal laws. Noah? So uh, as soon as I should state, we were proactive. And what do I mean by that? This came to us through not an individual coming to the city council and making a complaint. This came to us because we were being proactive in what we were looking at around Councilmember King. And we found a document, which is what opened this investigation. And that is what started this process back in March. Steve, is that right? March. Back in March. So it wasn't that an individual came to us and leveled a complaint after what had happened a year before. It was that we proactively were out there trying to ensure that people were behaving appropriately uh, in discharging their duties as a council member. So I think we should start with that. The council was proactive here. And as soon as we found this out, we started the process. And not that soon after, we engaged with the special prosecutor to come in to conduct a thorough and independent investigation. And then the committee met literally for months and months and months and months and months. And while this was happening, when we saw retaliation happening against employees of Councilmember King, we immediately set to protect them in a variety of ways, which I'm not going to get into because uh, I want to uh, respect their confidentiality. But we did a series of things as soon as we found out there was retaliation to protect them. Um, you know, one of the things here that we have had to look at is, of course, precedent. And if you look at what's happened in the state legislature, if you look at what's happened here in the city council, when there have been expulsions, it's been because of uh, criminal convictions. And that's not, has, that's not what's happened here yet. Uh, I mean, again, I'm not a prosecutor, but there could be another law enforcement agency that, that, that may decide to take a look at this, given what's in the report. Um, and again, we could always come back and relook at it if there is new evidence that comes forward, if there are other people that come forward, depending on what happens. But the committee spent a long time. They were very proactive. We worked with an outside independent prosecutor. I feel very confident in how we handled the situation. I have to go by the fact pattern of an individual case that comes to us. I can't stand up here and talk about potential scenarios. I'll say that I think what you've seen in the last a little less than two years of my being speaker and the chair being chair of this committee, we have gone through multiple investigations. Nothing has been swept under the rug. Nothing has been punted. Nothing has been, oh, we can work this out privately. Anytime there is something that comes to us, 
we handle it through the chair and his committee, as well as the general counsel's office, and in some instances with an independent prosecutor, given the serious nature of the charges. So I'm not gonna stand up here and say if this happened, if that happened. Whenever there is an incident that comes to us, we handle it immediately, we open the investigation, we look at the facts, that's what we do. Uh, Juliet? There could be a council member that makes that uh, amendment. That's possible. So would the vote be taken on that today? Would that be done? Yes, the vote would be taken today if that amendment is made. Joe? Um, I have a question about the monitors. Can you tell us who it is, when they're going to start, how much money they can share, and how much damage? We don't have all that information yet. You know, it would, it's going to be uh, you know, challenging to find someone who's going to want to take this job. It's not an easy job to take. Um, so we are. I think we have a temporary solution, um, but I haven't talked to my chief of staff about it today. If the vote, if the vote passed today, the monitor would start tomorrow. A, a, tempor a temporary, temporary monitor, temporary. a temporary monitor until we can engage with a long-term, full-time monitor for the duration of his term here. We have not, the, the temporary monitor is likely to be a staff member who already works here at the city council, someone who we feel confident could do the job until we find someone in the long term. And then uh, forever the long term monitor ends up being, we have in no way worked out what the payment would be uh, or all of that. Our general counsel's office would have to work that out with the monitor and sit down and, and put together basically a contract on how that would uh, function. And who, who is the staff that would do I don't want to say that yet. Let me get back to you. Um, let me, Jen can get back to you. Let me just check with, uh, Jason, the chief of staff, to make sure we've had the appropriate conversations that we've needed to have. Marsha. I read all 48 pages and I looked at the transcript as well and I felt literally sick to my stomach uh, hearing what these staff members had to go through and how a culture of fear and retaliation and intimidation was uh, set up. It was painful to read it, which is why I feel so confident in, in what we're doing here today, why I know we're doing the right thing. Um, you know, there, the appropriate, I believe the appropriate law enforcement agencies will look at this, are looking at this, and will make a determination on their own on whether or not they think there are additional things to look at here based off of the very thorough report that the committee and the special prosecutor uh, put together. Again, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't comment on whether or not I think there's criminality involved, but that's what that's why we have multiple law enforcement agencies uh, in the city to actually take that look. Is it only being referred to a prosecutor's office, or is that something that's uh, I think that um, there, th there's been a referral to some agencies, and there may be other agencies that are going to look at this on their own. You love? You don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. Okay. Jim, do you do you want to? Jim, Jim Karras is general counsel. We don't we don't have rules. That Step over here, Jim, to the mic. Uh, we don't have we have the disorderly conduct rule, which provides for and the and section forty five of the charter, which provides for the council to punish members up to expulsion, uh, but we don't have rules saying uh, if this happens, then that happens. Uh, but you know, the city also has rules about uh, making referrals to appropriate agencies as well. And I guess so just the, the end part of that question, whether the council might consider changing some of the rules based I, on what happened. 
I think we've. Discussion. I think we've learned a lot from this process, and I think that's a conversation that I'll have to have with the general counsel and with the chair of the committee in the wake of this. Um, it's We've just been trying to get through this process in a thorough, fair, independent way. Um, and so that's what we've looked at at this point. But I'm sure that's a conversation we will have in the aftermath of this. Because again, if you, re if you read the 48-page report, some of the most damning parts of the report is the obstruction and the uh, uh, tampering and the interference. When you read about that, it shows the level of egregiousness that we saw here. And so, of course, that's something that we'll look at. Gloria? Yes. Well, again, I'm going to let the chair speak on how the committee came to this uh, decision. <clears throat> but I would just say what you're seeing here today is unprecedented. You've never seen uh, a level of sanction against a council member of this severity before in the, hist in the modern history of this legislative body. So I think what people should see is that we take this seriously, that we conduct a thorough investigation that we did everything we could to protect the witnesses and the employees that were involved. And then we were also operating under um, a, a legal rubric of trying to figure out, you know, what is the appropriate uh, level of sanction here, um, given past precedent, past precedent, given what could happen in the future. It was a balancing act of us doing all we could to show the harshness of the penalty involved while, while protecting the witnesses and the staff and wanting to ensure that this would potentially withstand legal scrutiny because you see Councilmember King and his attorneys filing an Article 78 today against us from even taking any action today. So we had to balance all of those things to get this right. Yeah, and, and listen, I think the, the, the most important thing I think that one should take out of this is that we're, we're here to protect um, witnesses and complainants and do everything we can. And this decision wasn't made easy. It wasn't made quickly. It was a long, long process. We took everything into consideration, much of what, of what the speaker just said. Um, but at the end of the day, we, we think it's strong enough. We think that complainants and witnesses will be protected. And if he does anything, anything that we deem that is against these recommendations, we will certainly open a matter extremely quickly and everything will be on the table. If it passes, yes. I think they are in court right now, so that remains to be seen. I don't have that information with me, but I'm happy to have Jen fall. Yeah. Yep. Penalized. Let me just, Marshall, let me go to people that I haven't called in yet, then I'll come back. Bridget? Well, the monitor, the temporary monitor will start immediately, uh, and the monitor will be there. If this, if this package that I outlined in my remarks of the 10 recommended sanctions, if this passes today with no amendments, uh, just the ones I talked about, the monitor would start immediately, 
and the monitor would be there for 30 days without Councilmember King being present, and the monitor would ensure that the staff is doing their job, they're answering the phone, they're responding to constituent complaints, they're getting out information and email, emails, all the things that basically a, a chief of staff or a district director does to ensure that an office is functioning and being uh, you know, sensitive and responding to constituent concerns. That's what this mo temporary monitor would do starting tomorrow, starting right away, and then the permanent monitor would ensure that that was happening throughout the course of the time there, both in working with the staff, but also making sure that everyone is being protected and the office is running correctly. Yeah. Can I just add it before? I'm sorry. I, I, um, I think it's important to note that the monitor in place will do all that for 30 days, and then once the member comes back, the monitor will be there for its main purpose of protecting staff. Uh, Councilmember King is still an elected official um, if this moves forward. He can still call on his own to Department of Transportation and Department of Sanitation and, and, and handle constituent service and uh, attend community meetings. So um, he's still an elected official after this vote. Rich? It's, it, it's, we're giving them the option, and I don't want to discuss what they want, but we have protected them. We will continue to ensure that their livelihoods are protected, that they are okay. That is what we are doing here. I don't know what their preference is, but we will make sure that they continue to be protected and their livelihoods are not threatened. It's on an installment plan. I don't have the details, but it's an installment plan. Rich? Can I ask a question? Uh, could you clarify what you all involved in agencies for this meeting? No, I can't. I can't uh, do that. Can you do a weekend thing? Why do they have to come back? What is the reason to support the process? No, I, so I said to Noah, I'm not going to get into, I mean, I'm not a, a, a prosecutor or a law enforcement official. They're going to take a look at this. Some of these, um, nearly all of them have subpoena power themselves, these law enforcement agencies. So if they see things that they wanted more information on, besides being in contact with the general counsel and potentially the independent prosecutor, they could conduct their own investigation into things that they find concerning that was laid out in the 48-page report. Can you clarify this local or federal? I can't clarify, no. Uh, Jeff? This is why. I personally don't believe that um, he, especially on his return, this monitor is there for protecting staff. He can go about his business as a council member uh, the way he says he's fit, but he cannot harass, he cannot. Um, intimidate staff, and that's what the monitor will be uh, put in place. He can certainly act as a council member, um, and you know the, the the sanctions we put forward are because of his bad behavior. But once he comes back, um, he, he he can act as a council member. <coughs> but so can any staff member. I don't. I don't believe so. I. I. I uh, anyone can can certainly bring forth a complaint uh, if they f if they feel harassed. Uh, I just wanted to add also that even though you're not appointed to a committee, you can still attend all committee meetings. Every council member has the ability to attend council meetings, whether they are on that committee or not on that committee. And also, we have many elections here, so our office, the city council, is very prepared to be able to step in and to assist where there might be issues where um, there is not a member present at that particular moment. So we have elections, that happens. We have maternity leave, that happens. We have illnesses and sicknesses. The council is fully prepared to make sure that Councilmember King's district is served during this time. Uh, yes.
It wasn't. It wasn't a similar situation. No. We we are not sending that message at all. We have done everything we can to protect people. Again, let me just remind you. We found this out because we were being proactive. No one even came to us. We found this out through another uh, method, and then we immediately sprung into action to protect people who didn't come forward, and we proactively reached out to them to get the information and then put in a series of measures to ensure people were protected. I, I will never attempt to speak to for uh, victims or survivors, but, you know, I think people, um, generally I will say, people I think felt like we handled this appropriately, um, that we respected them, that we listened to them, that we gave them the information that they needed, um, and that we've kept their confidentiality mm -hmm. throughout this entire process. We've handled this in a very, very professional way. Um, and again, every, uh, every potential investigation is unique on its own. And I can't give it sort of a general answer on that. Okay, we have to finish. Uh, let me go to Gloria and then Marsha. I didn't say her name. No, I said, I mean, I, I, I think she's incredibly brave to have come forward. And I am deeply sorry for what she had to go through. It's incredibly painful, and in the wake of that, she has, I think, handled herself in a um, pretty uh, courageous way by, it's not easy for people to come forward mm -hmm. and tell their story, and she decided to do that. Um, so I wanna thank her for that. Uh, but the committee made a recommendation, and I think Steve answered that question about how we came up with the, how the committee came up with the sanctions that it wanted. Okay, lastly, but Marsha. Yes. So if we were to get the Article 78 in court today, what happens? I mean, do you, there will be a vote today, I take the vote, and I take the vote to kind of get the outline in your speech. Will that be stayed pending a court hearing or the Supreme Court? Have, yeah. Or can you do things like have your monitor in place? Like what, what happens? I think, I think it's gonna depend on what happens? I think his initial, our sense was his initial uh, gamut was to um, try to enjoin the council from meeting today, to stop us from actually meeting at all to even cast this vote. It doesn't look like that's gonna happen. We are gonna meet and we are gonna vote on the resolution before us. If he goes for, uh, uh, jump in if I get this wrong, uh, if he goes for a temporary injunction to stop the resolution from being enforced or a temporary restraining order, basically the same thing, to stop what is in this resolution from being enforced, the law department, which is representing the city council in coordination with the general counsel's office, will uh, ask the judge to allow this go into effect and not grant an injunction or temporary restraining order. And there may be a, a date in the next few days where they could actually uh, argue the merits of uh, what his lawyer is putting forward. Um, but that's, I think, the sort of the sequencing of where we are. Did I get that right? Okay. I have no idea. I think it probably depends on the judge. It depends on the county. It depends on a variety of things. Okay, thank you all very, very thank much. You.